Morning everybody, another exciting video from me on the Gardner engine um, and this one really is exciting. Uh, I'm going to show you how we lift these engines in various ways. Um, if you're familiar with Gardner's and you're familiar with lifting them, um, you might want to skip forward to about um, 07.49 uh, in the video because that's where the really uh, exciting and maybe more unusual stuff is. Thank you so much. Afternoon everybody. Um, here we have uh, Gardner 6LXB. This is one of our bread and butter engines. She's very near complete, very nearly ready to go. And my objective on this video is to show you how we lift these engines. So I have to switch off my sense of humour this is quite a serious subject um, because we can do a lot of damage in a number of ways by not lifting these engines properly. Um, why do we want to lift the engines? Well, we want to move them around the yard, uh, we want to put them up with a dynamometer, and of course we want to ship them. So how do we ship them and how do we package them? Uh, the 6LXB weighs, with her flywheel and with a starter and all the normal stuff, weighs about a ton, one ton. 8LXB weighs about, or oh, I think about 1200 kilos, something like that. 8L3B with its gearbox could weigh something like four and a half ton. So this is not a subject to be taken lightly. Now the straps that we use for 6LXB we would use something like these. They are a ton each, so we've two ton there that gives us a ton extra to play with. Uh, for 8L3B, <coughs> we would use something like this. This is, uh, again, this is a four ton, two of those is eight ton, so again, we've an adequate uh, margin of safety there. We don't use chains. Now, there's a number of reasons why we don't use chains. Uh, one, chains are inclined to slip. The coefficient of friction between steel and steel is quite low. So a chain will slip where a strap will grip. Wood is the same. You'll find that the hauliers, if you're shipping an engine on a pallet, uh, they only want it sitting on wood. In other words, it has to be on a pallet. They won't lift it uh, steel against steel. That's a normal thing. Also, they'll want the engine drained of oil and labelled as such. Uh, we've had a few problems in the distant past where an engine has leaked oil and the hauliers are, are not very happy about that. Um, <clears throat> just <clears throat> on the subject of uh, hauliers and shipping, shipping is a lot less expensive than you would imagine. We can ship an engine from here to the mainland UK for a good bit less than £200, depending exactly where it's going to. The North, Scotland and, and um, the islands of Scotland might be a little bit more expensive, but not, not an awful lot. We can create an engine and ship it to Australia for £750 with insurance and so on. That's by sea freight. The uh, shipping companies out there are killing each other on price. Um, <clears throat> now, gardeners have made life quite easy for us whenever it comes to shipping or lifting. You'll notice um, on here there's a, an extended stud. Here there are two and here there is another one. <coughs> Just for comparison's sake, <coughs> that's a conventional stud there. You'll see the length of the top of the threads in about an inch or so. That's one of the extended studs uh, that go on the end and in the center. And that's one of the special studies, studs. You'll notice a threaded hole in the top, and that's where one of the long bolts go down through the rocket covers to engage in that hole. There's two of these in the head, one there, one there, and another two on that head. Now, this gives us some flexibility. Uh, we can put on our, our lifting eyes, there's a con uh, conventional, original Gardner lifting eye. Um, if I look up in here, I would imagine it's threaded for maybe an inch or thereabouts. 
So that screwed on there gives us a really very strong connection. That's a, a homemade lifting eye. It's still pretty good. That's just a conventional half inch BSF nut welded onto that piece of uh, uh, heavy gauge tubing and again a heavy gauge ring weld on the top. It, it's fine. But um, I have a slight preference. I have some preference for the original ones. They also look better. Um, my understanding is that each engine as delivered by Gardner had two lifting eyes went with it. So if we want to lift the engine now, if the engine didn't have a flywheel for example, uh, we mightn't want to lift it in the middle. We might want to position our lifting eyes to one side. Um, with these straps that I showed you before, we can do this with uh, the forklift because we can position the eyes, we can position the straps there or there or there or like that uh, to balance the engine and keep it horizontal. So there's a lot of flexibility there. Now, you'll understand that we've got an alloy crankcase here and we've got a cast iron block and we've got cast iron heads. So it's easy to visualize that this is a top heavy engine. They are, if they get the opportunity, inclined to topple over. So we have to be very careful. Whenever we're strapping them to ship them, we can bring the strap up over the top here uh, and the same here on that block, or perhaps better still, we can bring it up here because then the strap is coming up at not such a steep angle and it's more effective. We can also run the strap through this eye here so that it's fixed here, and again, that increases the stability. We have to be careful uh, because if we've got the, the lifting eye on the stud, we have to be careful that the pull is straight up. We don't want the pull coming up at this angle, otherwise we're likely to bend that stud and that will cause all sorts of problems. This is our spreader bar. We can move these shackles to either one of these holes and in combination with positioning the spreader bar, we can keep the engine perfectly balanced. This spreader bar uh, we made ourselves. Uh, you can see that it's T-section. Uh, originally it was just a uh, single I-section, but it actually bent one day lifting an 8LXB, so we had to reinforce it with these two bars here. Now it gives no bother at all. But it is starting to wear a bit here, so we may have to set in hardened rings here to address the wear on there or, or, or weld them up. I can't emphasize this enough. Definitely the safest way to lift these engines is from the top. Uh, they may swing a little bit on the spreader bar or whatever, but it's definitely the most stable and the safest way to lift them. I'm not gonna deny it. We do sometimes place them on a pallet. This one's on a pallet at the minute and um, we don't have much choice sometimes. We have to use a pallet because we've got a low ceiling in this particular workshop, but we just have to be very, care very, very careful and lift them very, 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 very gingerly. Um, relatively recently is, it's actually more stable to send them on their flat. And I'm gonna show you that now. I'm gonna show you how we get an engine from its vertical orientation like this onto its flat and lowered onto a pallet. I'll show you how we can actually flip this engine over into the horizontal plane uh, quite easily. Um, and to do that I've passed a strap all the way around the engine and put a dole in it here just in and about where the injector pump is. The higher I put this dole up then um, the more vertical the engine will stay and then you can lower down gently into a fully horizontal position. Uh, I'm also going to put on 
this holding device here, which gives me a little bit of control over her whenever she's uh, uh, swaying. By the way, this same doll you can put on the lower lip of a horse if you've got an obstreperous horse and you'll, you'll really control him in that way. she comes. Now I can stop her from swaying, I can put her in whatever position I want and I can lower her down. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a couple of skids underneath her so that she doesn't, um, so that I've still got room to move the strap right on the, on the underneath. I don't know if you can I don't know if you can make this out or not, but I put another strap around her amidships. And this means that I can have the second strap there like that. Put my hoist on like that. Lift her back up again. So the engine is now, as you can see, more or less horizontal. I can drop her down onto the pallet where she naturally wants to live. Um, you'll notice that I've put this strap here completely underneath the pallet, not in through here. There you are, completely stable and completely safe. She can neither fall, or more importantly, she can't fall on top of something else or somebody else and do harm. I think this is a super way of moving engines around on a pallet. Um, I hope you got something out of that. I know I certainly did, and thank you so much. <coughs> now we've got the the opposite side of that equation. Here we have an engine that has come into us uh, on its flat, on a pallet. I want to see how we can get it upright so we can work on it and, and um, dismantle it and so on. So all I have to do is put one of the original lifting eyes in, well take out this little cap first of all, put in that original lifting eye and because the rocker arm's on there there's not enough room, there's not enough leeway for the lift, lifting eye to bend the stud. So it's all quite safe. And I have doubled up my one ton straps here. So um, it's extra safe for that reason. Um, not only that, but as the engine comes up, at no point will the full weight of the engine be actually be on this strap. It'll always be resting on the ground. I'm inclined to leave the original um, pallet straps on here because I think as the engine comes up, the pallet itself just gives a little bit more protection to the engine and reduces the chances of us um, doing any damage. So let's see how this comes up now. Nice and gently. Up she comes, pallet now. Now sometimes they are inclined to swing here. So we do have to be careful. But that's it. That's that engine upright now. I can let it sit down some weight on the ground. And I can take off the pallet and we can carry on. Our, this is our gantry. And we can wheel it around the yard as we want. And we can lift engines from here and our forklift picks it up here. Really very useful um, for getting in where we've got low, low ceiling height or picking up light objects from very high on racks. Super job.
again, we meet that locally here.